Wednesday service of worship with Willow Avenue Mennonite Church. Today marks the beginning of Lent, a six-week journey to help us get ready for the season of Easter. Whether you're here with us in person or on Zoom, we are so glad to have you with us. Jesus welcomes all, and so do we. Lent is a time for us to return to our creator who formed us from the dust of the earth. Our lives are finite, and so we want to spend every precious moment in tune with God, living whole, abundant lives, the kind of lives we were created to live. And so in recognition of our origins in the earth, in acknowledgement of our finite days, we come to receive ashes and remember, dust we are, and to dust we shall return. Throughout the season of Lent at Willow Avenue, our Sunday morning Easter, or Sunday morning services are called Wandering Heart, Figuring Out Faith with Peter. Each service in this series from today, Ash Wednesday to Good Friday and all the Sundays in between, picks up a line from the hymn, Come Thou Fount, as one point of reference for that particular service. And so tonight, the theme, the line is, tune my heart. As we begin this season of Lent, let us turn inward and tune our hearts. Before an orchestra plays together, they must all tune their instruments. The cacophony of this process may be very loud and create lots of dissonance, but it's a necessary step in the process of creating harmonies and melodies. And so, this Lent, how can you tune the instrument of your heart so that it aligns with God. by Reverend Sarah A. Speed. Tune my heart like an old violin, like a worn down piano. I have been left out in all manners of weather. I have been left alone for far too long. So, like a concert master with a steady hand, tune me up. Listen and learn the cracked keys and the broken strings. Memorize the forgotten intervals that even I did not know. And then, when we're ready, when this creaky heart is tuned, teach me a new song. Jesus. 
classic hymn of confession and repentance attributed to King David after his grave sins against Bathsheba and her husband Uriah. As disgusted as I am by David's actions, that God forgives him is encouraging because that means there's hope for me too. clean heart, create in me a clean heart, have mercy on me God, in your compassion. sometimes get a negative reputation. It's viewed as the season in our faith when we give things up and we prepare for the worst. We wait for the other shoe to drop. However, 
I cannot help but that, but to imagine that God wants for us more than just six weeks of discipline or six weeks without chocolate. I cannot help but imagine that God wants a life for us so expansive that faith, hope, and joy flow over the edges. So, let us confess, not because we have to suffer our way through Lent, but because the truth moves us one step closer to God, to the expansive faith. Let us pray. Holy God, we confess we don't return to you fully. We share with you the pieces of our lives that are convenient. We put on different hats in different rooms. We forget that we are called, invited, and loved with all that we are, including our mess, our beauty, our faith, and our doubt. Forgive us and give us hearts that long to return. Amen. Friends, God sees you. God hears you, and God loves you. You are forgiven and claimed with all that you are. Rest in that good news. Thanks be to God. Ubi caritas is Latin for where charity is or where love is. The first two lines in English continue. Where charity and love are, God is there. Christ's love has gathered us into one. This version we're about to hear is sung by a group called King's Return. As the music and these lyrics wash over you, May your heart be filled to the brim with love and compassion.
invite you to look at the question located on the back of your bulletin at the very top. If you don't have a bulletin, raise your hand. We'll get one for you. This is a centering practice for Ash Wednesday. As you leave the sanctuary this evening, you're invited to receive similar centering and prayer practices for rest of this week, as well as other resource, another resource out there. Please look at those. Each week we will hand out additional prayer practices. But let's take a moment to center ourselves and consider the question, what habit, mindset, or emotion would you like to leave behind? this Lenten season. On your own, I invite you to spend some time with the prayer. Spend some time with the question. And when you are ready, I invite you to one of the tables located on either side to take a candle and light it as a symbol of this intention of your faith the intention of your heart as you ponder this question as we begin our season of Lent.
Listen in the silence, listen in the noise, listen for the sound of the Spirit's voice. Listen in the silence, listen in the noise, listen for the sound of the Spirit's voice. Listen in the silence, listen in the noise, Listen for the sound of the Spirit's voice. One way to think about fasting and how to decide what to fast from is to think about what you need to feast on come Easter. For example, one year with prompting from the Holy Spirit, I knew what it was that I needed to fast from and what I needed to feast on. It was the knowledge that I am the beloved of God. And so what did I need to fast from to get there? I needed to fast from self-recrimination and all forms of negative self-talk. It was a different kind of fast that year, but one that ultimately drew me closer to God. So hear now the reading of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 to 21 by Ken Lutke. Be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Whenever you give to the poor, don't blow your trumpet as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may get praise from people. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that you may give to the poor in secret. Your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't be like hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that people will see them. I assure you, that's the only reward they'll get. But when you pray, go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. And when you fast, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites. They distort their faces so people will know they are fasting. I assure you that they have their reward. When you fast, brush your hair and wash your face then you won't look like you are fasting to people, but only to your Father who is present in that secret place. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Stop collecting treasures for your own benefit on earth, where moth and rust eat them, and where thieves break in and steal them. Instead, collect treasures for yourself in heaven, where moth and rust don't eat them, and where thieves don't break in and steal them. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also.
it's sinking lower and lower. <laughs> I'm not able to see it as well. Repentance looks different for different people. For some of us, repentance might even be somewhat dangerous, giving us religious sanction to emotionally, psychologically, or spiritually beat ourselves up. So what can we do? One tool that I have found to be most helpful is a study of the rules of discernment from St. Ignatius. The first two rules are especially helpful for thinking about repentance, Ash Wednesday, and generally this season of Lent. And so I offer to you my own paraphrase of these first two rules for your consideration as we prepare to experience the mark of this season. Rule one, in persons who are unaware of God's presence and are not able to detect the inner movements of the spirit, they are drawn away from God by imagining the good life and by being enchanted by all those things they think they deserve because they're worth it. And they are drawn away from God by seeking satisfaction and fulfillment in things that tell them that they're important successful and valuable they are drawn back to god when they are made aware of god's presence and when their eyes are made to clearly see that things other than god will never satisfy and that all they have are in fact gifts from god they are drawn to god when their focus is shifted from living for self alone to living for god alone Rule two, in persons, on the other hand, who are actively working at becoming more aware of the presence of God, they are drawn away from God by doubting their sense of God's presence and by fears that they are simply imagining God's presence in the first place. When they doubt and think they're imagining things, they become anxious and turn inwards on themselves attacking and berating themselves for their foolish and irrational feelings and emotions. However, these persons are drawn back to God when they are affirmed and reassured in their sense of God's presence. They are comforted by the personal testimony of others who have had similar experiences of God, thus reassuring them that they are not crazy, and by the insistent and steadfast love of God's self-revelation. Beloved ones, from the early days of our faith, Christians have observed the remembrance of Jesus' suffering and resurrection with great reverence. It became the custom to prepare for that observance by a season of prayer and fasting and the reconciliation of those who had been separated from the community of faith. By keeping the season of Lent, we take to heart God's call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and practice in our daily lives the work of reconciliation. I invite you, therefore, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and denial of our egos, and by reading and meditating on scripture. As a symbol of this season, let us now receive the reminder of our mortal nature with prayer and gratitude for God's redeeming work. You may choose to receive the ashes on your forehead or on the back of your hand, which you may indicate by simply extending it out in front of you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given true life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I invite you when you're ready to come forward through the center aisle and return to your seats through the side aisle.
Friends on Zoom, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remembering that you are dust, and to dust you shall return might seem like the most demoralizing thing to be told. But Jan Richardson's poem, Blessing the Dust, offers a powerful corrective to the misguided temptation to spend this season simply thinking badly of oneself. It's printed on the back of your order of worship. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, 
as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners, or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked, not for sorrow, and let us be marked, not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, 
take heart. It is I. Be not afraid. You are called. You are blessed in both your ups and in your downs. You always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting the good news. Amen.